What a do, Scooby Boo, it's your boy Shawnee B Gaming, and today we're going to be covering the bonus balance coming live on July 28th. We're going to be going over the god changes, the item changes, the new skins, and then just some announcements for the channel. If you are looking for some Smite content, I recommend checking out the channel. There's a lot of Smite videos up there. So let's go ahead and go into the patch notes. Bakasaur is getting changed to how he was before the mid-season patch. His Eat Minion received a buff, and they are reversing the buff that he received. So his Eat Minion is getting a decreased heal physical power scaling from 85% to 70% and it's decreasing the protections you gain. It was on a scale of 10 to 42. It is going to be changed back to a scale of 10 to 30. Camazots, I feel like, is played in the solo lane more than in the jungle, so all of these nerfs are probably addressed towards solo lane. With this mid-season, I feel like they're trying to eliminate some of the sustain that is in solo lane, and Camazot sustains in that lane really well. So in general, they're decreasing the base physical protections from 13 to 11 as he levels up. And his Devourer is getting a decreased heal. It was hitting on a scale of 10 to 50. Now it is going to be on a scale of 8 to 40. So both of these nurse are going to reduce his sustain in this lane. He's going to have less protections and less of a heal on his jump. Cthulhu. These are going to be some interesting changes. I think Cthulhu is one of the strongest characters in the game right now. Rushing Terror decreased the base damage of the dash. It was on a scale of 80 to 240. Now it is going to be on a scale of 70 to 230. So minus 10 at all ranks. And he's going to receive a base damage decrease of the projectile. It was on a scale of 50 to 170. It is now going to be on a scale of 40 to 160. So minus 10 at all ranks. And then his Sever Ultimate Ability decreased base damage. It was on a scale of 120 to 340. Now it is going to be on a scale of 100 to 340. So it seems like they're trying to address this in the early game, but they kind of like how strong he is in the late game. Having it decreased by 20 in the early game should reduce the amount of kills that Cthulhu is able to get in his ultimate. I think both of these changes are going to reduce how impactful Cthulhu is, although I feel like both of his other abilities are stronger. I'm glad they're kind of addressing the damage output in the ult. I think this is a good change, and I think Cthulhu will be a little bit more balanced. Raijin is up next. His Percussive Storm, which is his 1, is getting a decreased magical scaling per hit from 30% to 25%. This ability hit three times, so it was really 90% magical scaling, and that 90% is going to be decreased to 75%. So Raijin's receiving a little bit of a nerf there. Ratatasker. Ratatasker is one of the strongest assassins in the game. In fact, he's probably one of the strongest solo laners or support as well. He is very, very strong, so let's see how they addressed some of the issues with him. The reason he's so strong is because he just got his new nut system. And whenever Hi-Rez introduces a new character or a new item, they generally have it lean towards the strong side. That way people are incentivized to buy it and they can start gathering stats on it and adjust it based on the stats that they gain. So with the Evergreen Acorn, we're decreasing the physical power from 35 to 25. This Acorn allowed Ratatasker to heal quite a bit as he damaged enemies with his abilities. So reducing its power is also going to slightly reduce its damage output and its effectiveness in the solo lane. The Bristlebush Acorn is the acorn that affects your dash. Decrease the dart bonus damage from 40% to 35%. This affects both the base damage and the scaling of dart. So that's a small nerf. I think it's going to reduce its damage output a little bit, but I still think if you're in jungle, you're going to be picking up the Bristlebush Acorn. Up next, we're going to go into the changes to the items, and there are quite a few staple items in the game being tweaked. First up on the item changes is Shadow Steel Shuriken. Shadow Steel Shuriken was added in the mid season patch, so it's a relatively new item. It is an anti heal item if you can land a crit on the enemy. This item and its stats are pretty bad, it's really expensive, and it does not give you a lot of good stats. Its passive is useful but the stats just don't really justify getting the item for its passive. It is getting a decreased cost of 2,500 to 2,400 and is getting an increase of physical power from 20 to 30. I think this addressed some of the issues. It reduces the price and it also increases the power that you get from it. I think this item will be picked up a little bit more, but I still think it's not the best item. 
Golden Blade is getting a decreased attack speed from 20 to 15%. It's getting a decreased minion AoE damage from 75% to 50% on the item's passive. Golden Blade, ever since its price reduction, has been picked up a lot earlier in games. Certain characters like Arachne and Bakasaur make great use of it. In my personal opinion, I think Golden Blade is not great early on if you're going for a one-on-one -on -one fight. It is fantastic for clearing camps and farming early. And I think that this change is going to make it to where if you buy it early on, you're going to notice more of a drop off. But if you get three or four items into your build, you're not really going to notice the changes to Golden Blade all that much. And if you are worried that these changes to Golden Blade are going to ruin your build, I would recommend just switching your first item into a stone cutting sword and try that out. You're going to be able to really burn down the enemy and have a really strong early game. Serrated Edge is also a new item in the mid-season patch. This item is really strong because of all the stats that this item provides. Its passive is nice, but you really want this item for its stats. With it being a new item, I can see them not wanting to change the stats too much and kind of seeing how it falls into play. So they're just going to increase the cost from 2400 to 2550 Spear of the Magus is getting an increased cost from 2450 to 2600 it's getting a decreased duration of the passive debuff from 10 seconds to 7 seconds, and it's increasing the cooldown of the passive to 10 seconds to 15 seconds. I think this is a really good change for Spear of the Magus. It recently got reworked in the mid-season patch, and I feel like it did need some kind of adjustment. The fact that you could have the Spear of the Magus proc on somebody for 10 seconds, and then it only had a 10 second cooldown, so you could apply it to them as soon as it came off of them, seemed a little bit ridiculous, and now that they're adjusting it, it should be able to be countered just a little bit. And then the price increase is going to put it on the same scale as Spear of Desolation. So now it'll be the same price as Spear of the Desolation. But in most situations, I feel like you're going to want to go Spear of the Magus. I think it's worth talking about Heartseeker and Soul Reaver together. They're basically the same item, except for on the physical and magical tree. Heartseeker is receiving a decreased physical power from 75 to 65, and Soul Reaver is receiving a decreased magical power from 110 to 95. Heartseeker recently had its flat 10 pen change to a 10% physical penetration, so it just received a buff, and Heartseeker and Soul Reaver are considered to be anti-tank items. They remove a percentage of the enemy's health when you damage them with an ability, and because of this, it ignores their protections, making it really good for removing health on tanks. Since they are such anti-tank items, the developers want that to come at some kind of cost. So they're decreasing the power on these items. So you're going to do a lot of damage to the tanks, but not nearly as much damage as you were doing to the squishy characters. Typhon's Fang is receiving a little bit of a nerf. It's more of a fix than a nerf. So they fixed an issue where the item was providing 10 more magical power than intended. Now it is providing exactly what it says in the description. Ring of Hakate. In the mid-season patch, the Ring of Hakate received a new passive. It's passive red. Each successful basic attack applies a hex to the enemy and empowers you. Enemies receive 5% decreased power per stack. You receive 5% increased power and increased healing gained. Both effects stack up to 3 times and last 5 seconds. This item was really, really strong, so they're going to be removing the lifesteal that you gained from the passive, and they're going to increase the cost from 2500 to 2600 Warrior's Bane fixed an issue where this was allowing gods to gain more than 40% pen. 40% pen is the cap you are allowed to have for penetration as a physical character. It removed its passive and added 10% physical penetration. Soul Eater is getting a decreased base physical power from 30 to 20 and decrease the total physical power on Evolved Soul Eater from 40 to 35. So it is receiving a nerf of 10 pre-evolved and a nerf of 5 after it is evolved. This is going to affect you if you're building Soul Eater early on. It's not going to be as strong as it once was. So they're really pushing for there to not be as much sustain in the solo lane. They're kind of trying to nudge players into buying some protections and then going into some lifesteal later on. But I think this is some interesting changes. It'll be interesting to see how the solo lane develops over these upcoming months. The last item to receive changes in this bonus balance is going to be Hand of the Gods. The developer said that their intention for Hand of the Gods was if you are the jungler and you bought the jungler blessing, 
and you used Hand of the Gods, it should clear these small minions on the camps. Since they just reworked all of the camps in the mid-season patch, this got changed, so they are increasing the damage dealt from 170 to 200, and this should allow junglers who have Jungler's Blessing to now clear these smalls on any camp with Hand of the Gods. Up next, we are going to be going over these skins that are coming out in this bonus balance, and they look amazing. So there are going to be four skins coming in this bonus balance. The first one is the Dragon Guard Horse, which is going to be an exclusive new moon skin. We have the Oblivion Ruler Persephone, which is also going to be an exclusive new moon skin. And then we have the Neon Nightmare Shablanke, which is going to be an exclusive new moon skin. So there are going to be four phases to the new moon event. If you unlock any of the two phases, you're going to get this Neon Nightmare Shablanke skin. And then we also have the Dreadnought Cupid skin, which is going to be exclusive to the Dreadnought chest. I think this skin looks fantastic, and I love the band-aid. I love the head that floats. I think this whole thing looks fantastic. Even the card art. Two honeys hugging Cupid as he fights in space. Absolutely beautiful. I wanted to use the end of this video to provide some updates to y'all on the channel. If you are just here for the patch notes, thank you for stopping by. I hope you had a great time. If you are interested in more content like this, please check out the channel and subscribe for more. If you are interested in the announcements, I'll begin them in just a sec. Announcement time. Thanks for sticking around. So I started this YouTube channel back at the beginning of around March, and it's grown quite exponentially. I began by taking view requests and kind of showing people how to play gods. Well, there have been an influx of requests, and now I have over 50 requests in the queue, which is a little bit unmanageable. So my thought process and how I plan to remedy this is to kind of just focus on if somebody's asking for Freya in carry and somebody's asking for Freya in mid, I'll probably just do Freya in one of those positions. I am trying to focus on getting a guide for every single god in the game, but at the same time there are also events like updates that are going to affect how the items are happening or how the items affect each god. So for example, I didn't really want to cover any solo lane characters while I knew that the mid-season was approaching because the solo lane was going to get changed up so much with the changes to Gladiator Shield and some of the other changes that they made. So with that being the case, I do want to keep covering Smite. I have dabbled in some Rogue Company, which is another game made by hi -Rez. I've really enjoyed it. I've got a few clips playing in the background. I think I'm going to be uploading Smite daily with some Rogue Company videos in the afternoon here and there. If you are interested in playing Smite or Rogue Company with me, be sure to join the Discord server which is in the description down below. It's the best way to reach out to me, ask some Smite questions to the Discord server. There's a lot of good people in there with a lot of insight. So if you ever have a question, that's a good resource for you to find out more about Smite. It's also a good resource to reach out to me personally. I enjoy replying to comments, but if you're trying to ask a question or trying to match up with me, your best bet is the Discord server. To everyone who has made a request, thank you so much for the support. I hope I have helped reduce the Smite learning curve for you. I hope that you are enjoying Smite and you continue to try to learn Smite. Try out new characters, try out new roles, try out new builds. Just get familiar with the game. And if you ever have a smite question, or you ever want to see a god played, just let me know. That's going to be it for this video today. I just want to say thank you for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed the patch notes. A lot of key items are being changed. With that being the case, I just want to say, if you haven't already subbed, that really helps the channel out. If you give a thumbs up on this video, if you enjoyed it. I just want to thank you all again. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.